Hey guys and welcome back. Here's a topic that everyone's been kind of interested in and that's the quick jack system. Now I purchased this from Costco and they had a special going on online $1,000 free shipping with tax it came out to $1,150. Not terrible at all. And recently I had this happen to me. Smoking coolant. Something is leaking pretty bad under there. Well, and after being stranded on the side of the road with the prowler, I thought this was a great time to jack it up using the quick jack system, opening all the boxes, finding out how to set this up so I can get that in the air and actually determine the problem. All right, let's get started. As I was doing a little research on the quick jack system I realized that there's a few things that you need to purchase before you even start assembling that one of those is hydraulic oil now you can use this you can use automatic transmission fluid they tell you in the manual the uh, items that you can use for the hydraulic fluid I just went out um, tractor supply company has big jugs of hydraulic fluid if you're looking for them uh, bought some funnels because you guys hate it when I don't use funnels and then we've got also um, and then I've got some uh, thread sealant tape which they also say you need and then I've got my air compressor you need all of that to put this together so now that we've got everything let's start the unboxing process and see what we actually get inside of this let's start with this one in box one you get all of this and if you'll notice there is some sealant tape in the box so I went out and purchased this well you can never have enough so you do get the sealant tape in the box with the kit which is great um, you've got your pump you've got all your hoses all your connectors you've got the blocks for the actual um, skid pads themselves so I guess it's time to unbox both of these now and if you'll notice that's box two that was box one I did box three uh, seeing that I'm going out of order, I'm going to go to box two next. So I'll do three, two, one, because awesome. You're going to find this amazing, but box two has one of the actual lift ramps. So nothing crazy there, just a ramp. All right, let's go to box one. Hopefully that's where the instructions are. If not, I'm going to be going all offline for the instructions. They do have a great online PDF that shows you everything that you need and how to do this, but I'd rather have a paper one so I could just do it without using my phone. All right, box one, because no one tells us in what order we should go into. Great news, in box one, you get the manual, and this is a pretty hefty manual. Um, I'm sure that there are different languages in here. I'm hoping that's why it's so thick. Yeah, yeah, there are. So there's um, French, Spanish, English, I believe. Um, not don't hold me accountable for that, but it is in English and we've got what we need there other than that They have the other jack and the pull tool Which allows you to maneuver these when they're under the car so that you can actually grab it pull it out Push it in and adjust it to where exactly you need it. So this is going to be very handy this Super handy and basically you need everything. All right, let's figure out step one and go from there now that it's time to get to work, I went ahead and took my shirt off, took my hat off, and got some drinks so that, well, it'll be a little bit more entertaining this way. The first thing that we have to do is install these 90 degree elbows. And let's get up on this. So we have to take off all of these plastic fittings that make sense. This end with the rubber gasket goes directly into this end, like so. You have to make sure that this is pointing up there's no thread sealer tape that goes on this end, but you can put thread sealer tape on this end. Now, you will notice that this kind of is independent. That is so that you can tighten this into the hydraulic ram and then position this so it's up and that you can get access to it. And then you will tighten down the nut. It's a pretty ingenious system that allows you to actually control where this ends up. And that'll allow me to get this done. So I'm going to go ahead and install these now and see what happens. So one of the things I didn't see in the instructions was this little Allen key cap that's on there. It's a number six Allen key and it just fits into the slot and it'll allow you to loosen up this little cap piece that I'll show you. Okay, cap piece, piece that needs to go in.
Okay, so in the directions, they do say to put these blocks underneath to kind of give it some access. That way, this piece can actually spin so that you can get it in. If not, it hits there. And we still want it to remain up, which is not in the position that it is right now. So I think that will work when it comes to the way it's pointed, I hope. And now I'm going to, before I tighten that all the way down though, I am going to remove these blocks. And this thing is heavy, so just be careful while you're doing this. You don't want to jam your fingers in anything. Yep, and you can see that I've got plenty of maneuverability to get that hose in and out of it. So that should not be an issue. And I actually think that I might want it a little bit more like that. That way it gets it underneath as much as possible. Okay, finish tightening down this. Then I will do the other one and we'll go to step two. Next we have the two short hydraulic hoses. And as you can see on each one of these, you've got one end that is a male here. And then you've got an end that is a female. Now the female end is actually going to link up to where we just put those 90 degree connectors. The male ends are going to get screwed into these quick release hydraulic pressure valves. So to make things easy, if you're going to use Teflon tape, remember, it, no O-ring, use tape. O-ring, you don't need tape. When you put tape on, you want it to go in the direction that you're going to screw it in. So for this one, Obviously, we're going to be screwing in this fashion, so when the tape ends up, I need to be on that side. You'll see. Watch. All right. And when we start this, you don't need a whole lot of this, and you just want it flat. You just want it to cover it, and then pull to secure. Notice that when I pulled it, it was going this way, so that when I screw this on, it doesn't roll the Teflon tape up. It'll actually seal. So I'm going to connect this one, I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to connect this to the 90 degree angle and we'll start back from there. So far not too bad, you can see that I've got the short hoses connected to these 90 degrees. They're tightened on there. Remember if it's got an O-ring you don't need the tape. If it doesn't have the O-ring you put the tape all the way back and it's got the quick connector that will connect to the larger hoses. All right, so both of those are done right now. We've got to go over to the larger hoses and each side of this gets one of these quick connects put onto it. Same thing as before, we'll put Teflon tape on there, screw these on, tighten them down so that both of these will be ready to go. So far, super easy. You can see that both of the long hoses now have the quick connects on both ends, so those are ready to go. Over here, we've still got the short ones connected, but now we have to move over to the air, and this is actually pressurized, and you need 40 to 50 pounds of air in each one of these on both of them, so the next thing I'm going to do is fire up the compressor, and you guys probably don't want to hear that, but they do say to remove the caps, and then to make sure that you drain all of the air that's in there. So, you know, just a screwdriver or something to stick in there so that all of the air comes out. So I'm going to remove all the air, pressurize these to 50, actually about 45. It's between 40 to 50, no more than 50. So I'm going to do 45 on each of these. Okay, so you saw me just pressurize these tubes. I will tell you, these pressurize super quick. Just takes a, a short amount of pressure to get these up to between 40 to 50. So don't do like I did in the beginning, thinking that it's going to take a minute. It almost is instantaneous. So those now have pressure in them. I'm going to put the caps back on, and we're off to the next step. You know it's getting good when we're working on the pump. So we've got to remove these little red blocks and now we're going to fit in these now remember if it's got a seal and these have an o-ring seal on them you don't need the teflon tape so right now we're going to put these on 
good news. We've got our two valves put on there. We're now able to fill this with some hydraulic fluid. Now this one has a breather valve on it and when you get it, you can see it's all the way closed. When this unit is being used, it needs to be open to allow that flow of air so the hydraulic fluid doesn't make a vacuum in there. So, but we're gonna take off all of it. Tighten that back down so that we can fill this up now. It gets 2.5 quarts. Basically, it's enough to fill up to about that line right there, about half an inch from the fill cap. You wanna make sure that nothing gets in here. You want it pure hydraulic fluid, so you wanna make sure you put this somewhere where it's not gonna get anything on it. And let's start filling this bad boy up. Beautimus. All right, so the moment of truth. I have hooked it all up. Basically, it just all connects very easily. Um, I can raise it and lower it a few times so that I can get the air and the hydraulics into the system. But the thing I need to make sure is that I don't go past locking position one. They don't want you to fully extend this without weight on top of it. So let's press up. <laughs> Well, oh, there's one, there's another one. All right, so you see how notchy it is? That means that there's air in the system. And while that might not be what you want, that is what that means. So now I have to basically lower these down, raise them back up a few times, and then I'll take you through how to bleed these. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, after cycling these a few times, you'll, you'll notice this one was really notchy and it's got a little bleeder valve here. So I just gotta stick that in there and loosen it. And you'll see that it's starting to leak out. I just want it to leak until there's no air in it. And then tighten it back down. Don't want to go too tight. Clean it off. Well, I took a little break, got dinner, and I'm back playing with this. And they're getting better. Um, it does take a lot of basic just up and down, up and down, up and down until they kind of get used to what they're supposed to be doing. This one's still having a little bit of an issue. It just feels like it's jittery going up and I think that there's still air in the lines. So the way that they tell you to do this is to um, basically lift this thing up as a unit. They tell you to lift it up as a unit and to play with the up and that's what we're gonna do. So let's see what happens. So now we're going to open up the valve here. And that was a good sound. There's a lot of air that decided to come out. And now there's none, so I'm going to tighten it back up. There's a lot of fluid leaking. So it's good. Okay, that's tightened back up. You can see all the fluid under it, right there. It's always good. Clean this up a little bit. All right, so now we just keep playing with it until I think that it's smooth. This should be fun. Oh, it's going down very smooth. This is good. This is what you want it to look like.
It is slow, but that's okay. It's part of the game. They're going down about it. Well, I would say about at the same rate, but not quite. One's a little bit faster than the other. Not, not terrible. Let's go up with it. All right, both of them are very smooth right now. Oh, this is beautiful. Ultimately not the fastest system in the world. I am impressed. It's starting to work out really well. I was a little skeptical in the beginning. They were not lining up. Um, it's all because of air in the system. So everything seems to be working now. I think that we can actually try it on a vehicle, which I'm kind of excited about. So let's give that a try. I think that we're ready. So the moment everyone's been waiting for. Does this thing actually work? Well, it left my Prowler, which is a pretty light car. Am I going to destroy something? Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind is when this lifts up, it moves the car back about six inches. So everything's going to shift backwards a little bit. So you have to make sure you have enough clearance back there. I should be fine. Uh, I've double checked all of my mounts um, where I put them under and you know made sure that where they are are where they're supposed to be i guess um really all that's left to do is to send this baby up and i'm a little nervous uh, i don't want to have to pay for anything else all right let's see what happens So that is locking point one, where we're at right now, and I think that's where I'm going to leave it. But I want to make sure everything's okay. Give me a second. All right, I have to be careful. This is the first time I'm going to lock it down. I want to make sure that nothing goes halfway, not fully. All right. Look at that. a lot of work but now that they're ready this is awesome this is gonna make tire changes um, oil changes anything that you got to throw this under there now that the system's ready to go and easy to use nothing to it this is very very cool okay so I just went over checked her out went under it makes it so much easier still haven't figured out exactly why it was uh, dumping all the coolant out but I do think that I'm gonna go ahead and put it up to its full height and this worries me too. Everything worries me. It's okay. It's going to be fine. Let's check this out. Well, it's maiden voyage worked. It got it up, it got it down. Um, with the Prowler, because it makes it kind of like this, it's not ideal. Um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to make it a lot straighter. Um, but I think once I do that, it will be absolutely fine for it. And not going up as high with the Prowler probably is also a good idea. Uh, the Viper, any of the other cars where they're perfectly parallel frames, I don't think we'll have that same problem where it moves a little bit. Um, overall, it's not a bad system. I'm, I'm pretty impressed for a thousand bucks. It'll, you know make my life a lot easier it's going to make it a lot easier to fix whatever coolant issue that i have with that car is anyway that's all i have time for today i'm going to work on this another time but i want to give a shout out to anthony for coming and picking me up off the side of the road when that bad boy left me stranded anyway i will talk to you guys next time make sure you like subscribe catch you later